Hi everyone. Welcome to another edition of Facebook Live, Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles. I'm very happy to be with you. Apologies for being late. I'm in uh, Oceanside, California. We've just run for the train and now we're waiting for the train back to Los Angeles. We came down here to be on Rick Amato's show. Rick Amato does a number of shows about politics and economics. And uh, I was very pleased to be his guest to talk about ketamine. It's just remarkable how little this magical treatment has penetrated the general public. Rick was really blown away, and so were some of his staff. It's remarkable that they just, they're not hearing about it yet. Please, tell your friends. Everyone knows someone depressed. He started out talking about stress, and of course, stress does seem to have grown, but even more prominent than stress today is depression. It's, as you probably know, the leading cause of disability in the, in the United States. So, ketamine really helps depression. Another thing it helps is suicidality. Suicide is a prominent cause of killing, cause of death for people. We know that. We know that ketamine works for it. In fact, uh, Jim Merrow out of New York just published an article, uh, a, good, a good study of ketamine versus midazolam for reversing suicidality. Jim's results are very positive. This stuff really works. Those who are feeling helpless, hopeless, worthless, who are full of self-loathing, really not able to experience pleasure, they start to get these things back. They stop wanting to hurt themselves. This is, this is remarkable. And to have this in the midst of an epidemic of depression and suicide and not be using it is just such a shame, such a squandering of opportunity. If you or someone you know is depressed or suicidal, they should have the benefit of ketamine treatment. It works quickly has no long-term adverse side effects. It's a great drug, even if you're going to go on to other drugs, because this one will work right away, while those will take weeks to work. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about our experience we just had with the train? Do you want to talk about the train that we got on because we were in such a hurry that was going in the wrong direction? Yeah, that one. <laughs> well, we got on the, we're, we're down here in a small city halfway between Los Angeles and San Diego. <clears throat> and we got on a train that was headed to San Diego. We want to go back to Los Angeles. But being somewhat smart and somewhat cautious, while we got on the train, but before the doors closed, we verified with a staff member which direction the train was going in. He said, oh, we're going south. We got right off the train. So now we're on the platform waiting for the northbound train back to Los Angeles. We are looking forward to being back in the clinic. I had to be out of the clinic today for this opportunity to be on television. I'm really not a television guy, but I find every time I go on television, I reach people who had never heard of ketamine as a treatment for mood disorders. As long as that's still true, I'm going to get on television. I'm going to do whatever I need to get, do to get the word out. I really invite you to join with me. Get the word out about ketamine. Speaking of getting the word out, haven't we had some other opportunities worth mentioning or some other uh, accomplishments, I should say, in, in getting the word out lately? We were very fortunate to have a feature article in Los Angeles Magazine in the July issue. It's really... It's a good article. You know, there's no perfect article. We didn't write it. We're just the interviewees. But it's got a great picture of me. And uh, it really does describe what ketamine has to offer for people. It makes it sound like it's something only for a, an affluent few. But actually, the writer saw our clinic, and he knows that lots of regular, ordinary, middle-class people are coming in to get their suffering relieved quickly and safely. So I'm thrilled about that. And for reasons that are not completely clear to me, I have to ask my IT people, Wired Magazine 
also has an article on us on the web, which is great. And they have a film of one of my patients. His name is Sean, and I can say that because he said it's okay for me to say that. And he appeared with his own name on, on television, on, on the net. I think it was wonderful of him to do that. He's the real deal. And he really was very forthright about what this did for him. So, uh, we've had a lot of good fortune this month. Uh, a lot of people are beginning to understand. <clears throat> but today is, is really a lesson for me at how much more remains to be done to get the word out. Thank you very much. Any fun plans this weekend or anything you want to say in closing? Yeah, we're in the same theme. We're getting ready for a big benefit to honor our fallen heroes next Sunday night, the 2nd of July, in Marina del Rey. We're going to be talking about ketamine and PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, particularly as it relates to veterans and the war injured. It's a remarkable reversal. Now, it's not a cure. I'm not offering it as a cure, but it's such a reliever of suffering, and it so potentiates the other treatments available, and it so facilitates and empowers the patient who's suffering to make use of the other modalities. I know that you can't all be there in person, but be there in spirit and continue to get the word out, please. But if you do want to be there in person, we would love to have you. And there's going to be dinner, music, speeches, especially from some uh, very cool guests, including Joe Torillo, who's a New York fireman who was buried by both of the Twin Towers on 9-11. Uh, Jack Scalia. Multi-Emmy nominated actor Jack Scalia. Uh, it's going to be a great evening and uh, one of awareness and honor of uh, our veterans. And if you do want to come, just shoot us a message. We'll give you some more information. That's going to be in Marina del Rey on July 2nd at 6 p.m. I really like you folks coming around to Facebook Live. Thank you for joining me. I'm sorry I was late. We'll see you next Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Western. Pacific daylight time. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you have to forgive us. We really, literally, we're literally running for the train, and then once we got to the right platform, pulled out the phone because we were late and really wanted to get to you guys. And we we are committed to doing these at 3 p.m. and we want to kind of shift back to that. We've been late pretty consistent, and I hope you can forgive us. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.